Hi everybody, and welcome back to this Scalar training series on parsers. The next section is going to be on patterns and groupers. So now that we've gone through some basic parsing examples, let's um, add some more complexity into this. So um, let's go back to our documentation. And um, the piece of documentation that we addressed before were uh, line formats here. Um, so the next thing um, uh, are going to be parsing line fragments. And we actually alluded a bit to that within the last video. And what this section is generally talking about is kind of what I was talking about here, where you can just separate your formats and it makes it um, a lot easier. That's, that's essentially what this whole um, this whole section is talking about. So um, the next thing that we're actually going to be talking about, though, are uh, that we're going to be doing an example with is going to be uh, filled patterns. So filled patterns, um, I'll show you. I'll show you where they come in handy or where they're actually necessary. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a uh, another log line that we have um, directly from the documentation here. And for instance, let's, uh, yeah, let's just take this line here and let's talk about it. Um, so um, let's actually just append this to the end. And um, if we press test, um, we're going to see that this did not match anything, um, so, uh, but everything else still did. So what we're going to do actually is let's just uh, take this halt out first. Um, and then test it. And then here we go. So now it's matching everything um, except this last line. And it's because these are two dissimilar formats. Um, but if we want to accommodate that last line, let's just add one more format in here. And uh, we'll call this format three, just so we could get an idea of how things are actually matching. And this is actually a good side note. Like we can see format one and two matched here. Um, for this one, our goal is going to be for only format three to match, and we'll see actually how that works. Um, so let's just erase this here, and um, so now we have an empty format. And the first thing that we're going to do um, is we're going to grab this here, and this is the timestamp that we're going to grab. And um, let's take a look and try to just grab the timestamp. So um, let's just pull the timestamp um, here and let's um, run it. So it's pulling all the way from the beginning of the line to the end of the line. And this is because um, we're going from the beginning to the end quote, um, this variable starting from the beginning to the end. So let's um, try to add a, a Let's try to add a space here, and let's. Um, so the first, let's think about what we're actually trying to grab. So we're trying to grab the timestamp here, and then we're trying to grab this host here, um, and then maybe details or something about that. So we want to grab three things. Um, so we want to grab timestamp, we want to grab host, and then let's call this one details. And um, this is going to break um, unless we define a pattern. And we can see here that timestamp actually was um, just March, basically, is um, what the timestamp is actually going to. So what we can do to solve this problem, um, because we need host to come in still, and host, uh, so timestamp and host are delimited by a, a space here, and we have a space here, but there's actually um, a few spaces before we get to host, before the delimiter, the, the ultimate delimiter here. So um, we actually have to accommodate for those, and the way we do that is to define a pattern. So, um, the way we define a pattern is um, super simple. We're just going to take this pattern stanza here, and we're going to place it um, outside of the format stanza. So we could place it at the top or the bottom, but in this case, I usually place it at the top. And we're going to call this timestamp pattern. And um, let's just erase this, and I'll kind of explain how we would think about this if it were new. 
And um, so what we want to do is we're grabbing this timestamp here and um, we want to basically define a pattern for what this variable should match up to exactly. Um, so we can accommodate these two spaces in here and then we can delimit these by a space as well. Um, that's the goal here. So um, the syntax is simple. So we have we have we defined patterns here, and we defined one, and we could define multiple patterns um, if we wanted to as well. Um, but we defined one. We're going to call that TS pattern, um, and then we're going to set this variable equal to this pattern. And then we just define the pattern here. Um, so one thing that I like to do is I just paste the literals directly here in the pattern. And then we can replace these with uh, regular expressions. So we're going to do a word character, space, a digit character, uh, unlimited number of digit characters, a space, um, more digit characters, colon, more digit characters, and then finally um, those. So we basically turn that literal into a pattern here. Um, and um, let's just put these spaces in here as well. Um, and then I'm just going to simplify our regular expressions a little bit. Um, And okay, so this pattern now um, is going to accommodate this particular, um, with this timestamp pattern that we have here. Um, so if I test um, and I press test, um, we can see here that it grabbed just the timestamp and it parsed it. And then we can see host is um, since now we're now that now that space delimiter is the true space delimiter. Um, now we have host um, and then details, which is going to be the rest of the message. So that is how you define patterns, and that is why you define patterns. Um, So that's, uh, that's essentially filled patterns. And um, some other things to think about here is you could define your own patterns um, like we did here, but we also have some predefined patterns. And just for basic pattern or for basic um, pattern recognition, we have um, some standard ones. We have like alphanumeric, we have numbers, digits, um, different um, variations of quotes. Um, and then we can also match JSON, which is a very useful one as well. So now that we've defined um, patterns, um, let's take a look at another big piece of, um, another important piece to the parsing syntax, and that's gonna be multi-line messages or groupers. So let's uh, just take a look through our documentation and we'll find uh, multi-line messages here. And what multi-line messages um, the reason that we need to write these multi-line message rules or line grouper rules is because sometimes you have a message that comes in, such as a Java stack trace, that's going to be n number of lines. And the way that the system by default interprets a line is uh, one line equals one log line. But in many cases, you may have multiple lines that equal one log line, and we want to bring those together and give it a singular timestamp. So that's um, the reason behind what we're going to be doing here. Um, so now let's um, go through this example, and then we're going to go through uh, uh, another, a couple more uh, real world examples. So let's um, take this here and um, Let's all, let's uh, remove these as well. Let's just focus on the Java exceptions here. And um, if we're going to be doing groupers, let's um, take this format here. And then we're going to paste it in um, just like we did the patterns. So we're just going to um, add another line grouper. And what these objects consist of are a start pattern and then some sort of matching pattern. And um, the start pattern basically just defines when 
the when it's supposed to start grouping and then the match pattern it are some rules that are going to define how much to group basically so um let's take a few of these messages here um and let's say we so i pasted one two three four five of those in so if i run this now without the grouper and let's just uh, comment this out we're gonna see that uh so we want five lines but we're gonna get five times three lines so we should get 15 different lines here and uh, that's exactly what happened so the goal here is to turn this um, 15 lines into five lines and um, let's take a look at our grouper syntax um, so we're going to define the start pattern and um, let's just remove these and we'll just talk about them from scratch so the start pattern is um, dependent on the type of lines that are actually coming in um, so it takes a little bit of thought to think about um, the similarities and the differences in the different lines here. Um, but what we can see from uh, the from where we want the grouper to start is that um, there's no leading space. Um, but here there is there is, there are a few leading spaces here. So those are two patterns that we can key off of to pull these messages together. So the start pattern we're just going to define um, some a line that starts with the space so we want to start here we want to start here so we basically want to start here continue through and then start here start here start here start here um so let's do that so this is the start um and um this is a space basically so it's going to start with the space um oh and actually sorry it doesn't start with the space so it's going to start with a space. And then if we put this um, caret here, um, then that is basically the negative of um, this. So basically it's gonna start with not a space. So we have some options here. And the one that's defined within um, this example is a continue through pattern. And um, what a continue through pattern basically is gonna do is it's gonna match all the lines that are in um, that match this pattern are going to be in that group, basically. So in this case, um, this is starting with a space or uh, n number of spaces, um, and then just basically ends with an at. So so the start pattern is defining this, and then the continue through pattern is basically going to match every consecutive line that matches this here. Um, there's some other options um, as well, and we'll get to some of those, um, but they're pretty self-explanatory. Continue pass is pretty similar to continue through, but it's gonna grab one more. Halts before is gonna basically grab everything that doesn't match that pattern, um, and then it's gonna stop before that one. And we can do, uh, that one's kind of confusing if it's explained, but it'll make sense. And I'll do another example of that one. And then a halt with is going to basically grab all of the lines up to and including that, um, that the, the last line basically. So it, it's really useful when the log ends with some sort of like termination marker, uh, like a semicolon or something. Um, uh, it's good to define this one. So anyway, um, read through those, do some testing. Um, but um, yeah, let's let's do some examples here. So continue through. Um, let's think through this one. So basically, we want to match everything. We want to grab everything that matches um, this pattern here. Um, so um, it's going to start with a space. So it's going to start with a space, um, n number of spaces, and then it's going to go to um, at, basically. Um, and then this is a good time to explain as well that you could just do the do a fragment of um, regular expressions here. You don't have to, um, to match the whole line. You, I wouldn't have to do something like that if I didn't want to. Um, it's just going to be a, a fragment. So it's start until at. So if I press test, 
Here we go. So now these are grouped together nicely. Um, and then we can define the formats to um, start working with that with those. So for instance, let's grab uh, let's grab the first line. Um, so maybe let's call that exception. Um, and then so then we're gonna do a, a new line here. And then let's call the rest, I don't know, like stack trace. There we go. So there's the exception, which is this first line here. And then um, stack trace is going to contain the everything after the new line until the end of the the whole trace, basically. So um, so yeah, so we can um, define patterns and we can define groupers um, to give us more control over some of the lines that we're actually parsing. And um, that is a quick rundown on line groupers. Actually, before we conclude, um, let's talk about uh, max characters and like the max line field as well. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. You could set limits to the number of characters or the number of lines that are actually um, in there as well. Um, and actually, also, um, let's talk about the, uh, let's just do one more of these patterns as well. So you could get an idea because they they operate a little bit differently. So um, we have start and let's define halt before and this will make sense when I actually do it. So what the halt before pattern is, is basically a pattern that we're defining. And then um, we want to grab um, everything before that pattern, basically. So um, we define the start pattern, it's going to grab this. And then the, if you define halt before, it's going to grab everything until it sees this pattern. Um, so in this case, we would want to grab this, this, this. And then we want to define a pattern for this again. And it's going to halt before that. It's going to stop before that. So um, it'll essentially give us these three lines. Um, so that one's super simple. We're just gonna, it's gonna be the same as the start pattern in this case, um, because we basically wanna halt before the, the next start line. So if I do halt before, um, we should get exactly the same results. And those are um, patterns and line groupers. Stay tuned and we will get to some more advanced parsing features in the next video.